Hi everybody, I promised that I would film a follow-up video after my inspection was done, so uh, here it is and I'll discuss what the inspector um, told me when he was here. Um, some key points that I did find were very valuable was to keep whatever uh, containers you coated the inside with, this the truck bed coating that I used, and um, also keep the packaging for the master lock. So you can see uh, how many tumblers and verify that it, it does meet the specs of the ETF requirements. Also, you don't need this initially until you are going to store stuff in, but have your magazine inspection and transit action list handy. Um, this magazine did pass inspection, and I did receive the tags that go here in the corner and here on the magazine to verify that this is indeed a qualified magazine. One other helpful thing was that this door actually does lock on the outside. So that was another safety feature. One thing initially that the inspector was worried about is there is some cabins over there and the distance from those cabins to where the magazine is located is 135 feet. He didn't think that met the requirements because um, uh, the display fireworks list it as needing to be 150 feet. However, these tables are for outdoor magazines and the indoor magazine requirements for a Type 4 do not actually list a distance requirement. So he went back and called um, some people in Washington and did verify that there is no table of distance requirements for an indoor Type 4 magazine. So he went ahead and did qualify this magazine. But before that, he was actually talking about possibly using that brown shed back there or just moving it a little bit further that way, another 20 feet more um, towards the field than it is currently. And that would have met the uh, criteria. Uh, I'm gonna go over some stuff, some key points that I have in my magazine inspection and transaction list. This is my daily summary of magazine transactions. It's just an Excel sheet to keep track of your transactions. And um, here's some uh, key weights to consider um, for these various shell types. And to actually record weights, they are uh, half of the actual gross weight of the shells. That's what you consider the pyrotechnic weight. So when you uh, record your weight in here, I also have my permit explosives record of acquisition. And this is where you keep track of when you acquire them from your uh, distributor. And also in here, I have my magazine inspection list. When you are keeping display fireworks in the magazine, you have to inspect the magazine weekly. This is the folder that I received from the inspector. Here is my uh, license and I will attach a picture of this license and gray out my uh, personal information um, so that you can kind of see what will be on this license. But pretty much the first page just says that you have been approved for the license. The second page um, says that these are a lot of the laws that you should already know and um, it, it will list your other employees if they've been cleared or not. If you have more than one employee, me it's just um, myself that I got approved for and here is the actual license itself on this page with the um, permit number. Also in this folder is the uh, checklist that my inspector went over with me. It just shows the uh, various page numbers as they uh, correspond to the orange book and just various checklists to make sure that he covers everything with me while he is here. Here is the major uh, contact numbers for um, the BATF and I think there's some gun related stuff as well on here. And he also gave me the ATF safety and security information for federal explosive license and permits. On this side, uh, this is what I printed off the website. This is our um, Michigan application for fireworks. Um, that we have to fill out when we are going to shoot a show and this has to be approved by the uh, county before you perform a show and this is also some things that he gave me this is just various 
um, types of magazines and construction requirements that must be met. What I found most valuable was these uh, templates for your permit of explosive record acquisition and here's one for your daily summary of magazine transactions that I retyped up in Excel format printed off that are in my um, book that I'm going to keep track of and also included in here is a limited permit transaction report. I do have duplicate copies of the magazine inspection and transaction list. You have to have two of them. I have the one here, and then I have the one in here that is always with the magazine. And uh, my license will be uh, stored in that one that will always be with the magazine as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it that he discussed with me. Um, the uh, inspection went very smoothly. I did have a very nice inspector though, so it kind of depends on who you get, how things will really um, roll along and how uh, lenient they are going to be with you. Um, he was very happy with the construction of this magazine, so uh, if anybody has any questions, they can uh, watch my previous video on how I made this magazine. But it does meet all the construction requirements with the hasp being located inside. This is a five pin tumbler lock. Um, the uh, it's large enough diameter on the actual shackle and it is coated with all the uh, non-sparking material which I used um, truck bed lining and he was not worried about any of these spots that I did not coat or this air cylinder over here he was not worried about any of that so yeah if, uh, if anybody has any questions feel free to uh, comment in the comments below and Ask me and I will absolutely respond. And if you uh, like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel for future videos to receive notifications. One thing that I did also want to mention is that he said that the job site boxes do meet the minimum requirement for an outside magazine as well. Um, it would just have to be uh, permanently bolted down somewhere that could not be moved. Um, that was the next thing that I was going to do if he did not approve the magazine in its current location is I would be moving it outside probably to the other side of the hill over there um, along the farm field and I would have just met, built a uh, foundation just out of cement put some bolts in the actual cement um, concrete itself solidified those in there and then just bolted uh, the job site box down to that and that would meet the requirement of the outside job box I might end up doing that eventually as well um, if I want to be able to store more um, pounds in this indoor magazine because the limit for the indoor magazine is 50 pound, pounds only. Um, however, the inspector did say that I would be pushing to even get 50 pounds in this magazine, so that might be the limit that it can even hold. But eventually if I do end up getting a larger magazine, um, I could potentially move it outside and uh, bolt it to a foundation. Just wanted to follow up with that, give you guys a little bit more information.